Switch 2 was announced. Amazon wants TikTok and a 9070 XT GPU went kablooey. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, April 3rd, 2025. As a reminder, tomorrow's the last day of our RTX 5080 PC giveaway. Following that, we'll announce the next giveaway, which will likely be an RTX 5090 PC since I uh, finally was able to get my hands on another 5090 for us to be able to give away. Twitch.tv forward slash UFD Tech in case you want to check us out for that. And I want to check out AMD's response to all of the issues that are going on with the 9800X3D. We talked about this as the headline article for yesterday's episode of Hot News. There's over 100 documented reported cases of the 9800X3D popping, at least on Reddit. I'm not going to go into this and comment response too much, but I think a lot of people don't understand that those are public reports and we don't know how many private reports there are. And additionally, we don't know how many CPUs AMD has sold out of it. So we actually don't know any sort of failure rate whatsoever of these CPUs. But regardless, AMD doesn't seem to think it's a big deal because they've only talked about there being one incident of this happening. So AMD and ASRock discussing some of the failures that are happening with the Ryzen 9000 chips and essentially saying that they're aware of a limited number of reports of these ASRock motherboards failing to post. So they're just talking about boot failures, not necessarily anything to do with a damaged CPU, except for they do end this by saying that they have already addressed a singular report of a damaged CPU and that the rest of it is just that people with ASRock motherboards and 9800 X3Ds are having struggles with getting their PC to turn on. This is not quite the same thing. I already have reported on the ASRock AMD uh, boot failure issue thing that seems to be very separate from the 3D V cache explosions that are going on that are leaving dents in the CPUs and the motherboards. It's kind of weird that they say that there's only a singular instance when there's at least 98 documented on Reddit, which likely means that there's more that are going on behind the scenes. So we'll just have to see if they're downplaying it, if this is gonna come out to be a bigger thing later on, or if it really is just nothing. But only time will tell. And time has told us what exactly is going on with the Switch 2, with Nintendo having their Direct yesterday, unveiling a lot about the console, but not a lot of the technical specifications. We do get the things that likely matter to the end consumer, but not the things that matter to hardware enthusiasts such as myself. So we're looking at a June 5th release date and a $450 price tag with a lot of new specs, such as a 1080p 120 hertz LCD screen with HDR at 7.9 inches big, and it can display up to 4K 60 with the included dock, and that also also includes HDR. It will have a custom processor made by NVIDIA to enable all of this. The speculation is that there is some sort of deep learning super sampling that's allowing them to hit that 4K in dock mode. It's gonna have 256 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD express expansion cards that could allow you to get up to two terabytes. It'll have Wi-Fi 6. You'll have two USB ports, one on the top, one on the bottom. The game cards are the same size. It has a specific milliamp hour battery. And again, that 450 $50 price tag, unless you happen to get it with the new Mario Kart game, at which point it raises the entire price up to $500. So it's a $50 price increase, but we'll talk about how much the games cost in a little bit. They are changing the color of the Nintendo Switch 2 game cartridge. They're not changing the actual dimensions. However, we got to ask the question because it wasn't addressed. Are they changing the flavor? That's what we really need to know. But let's talk about the cost of games for a second because Nintendo did change the pricing of of games moving forward for both their first party and it looks like third party games are gonna cost more going ahead. And they're also choosing to charge for a Nintendo Switch 2 hardware demo game that is a launch title, very similar to what Sony put out with Astro's Playroom where you get to inspect the different elements of the console. The only difference is Nintendo is charging people for it. it is a paid experience, whereas Astro's Playroom came free with every single PlayStation 5. So it's a uh, it's a strange situation, a paid digital title. But games are looking to cost at least 
$80 moving forward. So that history of $70, the $69.99 that we're experiencing on the PlayStation 5, the Series X, as well as on PC, looks like it's gonna be raised with Mario Kart World being that flagship title coming in at 80 bucks. But that only is for the digital edition. The physical edition will cost an additional $10 coming in at 90 bones. So all of those reports and rumors of GTA 6 potentially costing $100, it doesn't seem so far-fetched right now. Nintendo pushing the price tag of games higher. They're pushing the price tag of their console significantly higher. You can get a Switch OLED right now for 350. They're raising it 100 bucks to give you the Switch 2. It does have significant amount of spec boosts in order to make it a substantial difference, but it's still gonna cost people at the end of the day. And in case you're wondering, can you play the original Switch games on the Switch 2? They have put out a document showing that most Switch games will run. There's no issues found during basic compatibility tests there are some select Nintendo games, first party games that are not compatible with the Switch 2. They haven't divulged what those are. And with partner games, it doesn't look like there's very many that are not compatible, but there are some with issues that were found during startup. However, there will also be Switch 2 editions of various games, which will likely get some sort of performance boost. The Legend of Zelda games, the Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are also expected to get those updates, but there's gonna be a lot of third party games coming down the pipe such as Elden Ring is gonna make it Hitman World of Assassination. The Bloodborne uh, spiritual sequel called The Dusk Bloods looks like it's coming out for the Switch 2 exclusively. It's gonna be made by From Software. It's a very strange situation that's going on altogether. But with the games costing more, the console costing more, it turns out replacement Joy-Cons also cost more with that being $90 now. And the Pro Controller is looking like it's gonna cost $80. Bucks. So that's a lot of money. You're going to be able to pre-order it next week on April 9th. There's going to be various different places that you're going to be able to pre-order it. The Nintendo store, all of the typical places that you buy gaming consoles. If you're looking to get it from the Nintendo store, they are prioritizing people who have Switch Online subscriptions that have had it, that have paid for that membership for 12 months, and they've shared gameplay data and logged at least 50 hours of total play time to potentially help minimize the amount of scalpers. So these are going to be invites things that happen that aren't part of the pre-order thing that's happening next week. It's just gonna try to give actual Nintendo Switch players an easy way to buy the Switch 2. There have been reports that there should be plenty of stock for everybody who wants it. How true that is, not quite clear. There is a two month gap between now and launch, so maybe the pre-orders are just for them to anticipate demand, or it's gonna be a situation where people try to get in, Best Buy's website goes down and you don't actually get one. Let me know what you think of the Switch 2. Are you looking to pick one up? Is it something that you're interested in? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments while Reese tries to save you some money so that you could afford these new $90 video games. Well, Reese, Amazon wants to get a deal when it comes to being more of a social media company. Yes, they already own Twitch, but it looks like they're putting their hat in the ring for the acquisition of TikTok. So in case you're not familiar with the goings on right now, because actually I forgot all about this, TikTok's getting banned this coming Saturday, April 5th, at least according to the previous delay on the TikTok ban that was supposed to happen on January 19th that technically did happen and that got postponed. ByteDance, the company that owns TikTok, is still supposed to divest it to an American company. Company. Amazon's putting in an offer. Allegedly, they're very serious about it. ByteDance is not serious about receiving their offer, so it doesn't look like anything's gonna be moving forward. And so we're in the same back and forth of will they, won't they, is it gonna happen, is it not? I'll keep you updated as we learn more, but if the first time is anything to go off of, I'm not necessarily expecting on Monday that uh, the US is gonna be tiktok -less. But we're currently lists on knowing when the 5060 and 60Ti are gonna launch, and now we have more indication that should be soon. Soon, Lenovo listing the 5060 and 60 Ti in a pre desktop. That's nice, that's helpful. What's also helpful is the RTX 5080 mobile GPU because that's finally being tested. The 5090 reviews came out last week, saw that it's 
not anywhere near a 5090 desktop, but it is the fastest gaming GPU on a laptop that's currently available. The 5080, however, is actually really close, coming in within 10% of the 5090 and the benchmarks that are coming out for the 5080 mobile. It looks like it beats the RTX 4090, so it'll beat any previous flagship, but then is, again, within 10% of the RTX 5090, but doesn't come with that exact same price premium. So the 5080 looks to be like the sweet spot of like you're trying to get top tier level performance, but not paying that upper echelon level price. Seems to be pretty good beating the 4090. Let me know if you're interested in a 5080 laptop. You're looking at getting a new gaming laptop anytime soon. And I didn't think it'd be this soon that we'd be talking about another oopsie daisy going on with some of AMD's products. When I say some, I'm specifically talking about one defective 9070 XT that had extremely hot hotspot temperatures and then caused the chip to go kablooey and die. So Igor's lab over in Germany reporting on an audience member who submitted their power color 9070 XT Hellhound for analysis where they got to see exactly what happened with this GPU and what caused it to go up in death. So you can see there's a crack in the GPU die. Additionally, with the analysis that they did with microscopes, they found that the irregularities within the actual GPU die were way higher than what's within spec. So that could potentially cause the insanely high hotspot temperatures that were being found on these GPUs, but AMD has already issued a statement on this saying that they're aware of this and that they believe it to be an isolated incident and they're working with their partners and internal teams to figure all of this out. So that's kind of the hope where we're sitting at right now. We just wanted to let you guys know that this has happened. AMD is saying it's an isolated incident. We also heard that about the 9800X3D popping when that first happened all the way back in November. And now we're here months later where it's happening more and more consistently. So just trying to stay Stay abreast of all of the difficulties that are going on out there. This is not to say you shouldn't buy a 9070 XT. Our review of that should be going live this weekend, and I have nothing but the best praises to sing of AMD's RX 9000 series GPUs besides the pricing. The performance is absolutely excellent. So this is not me trying to poo-poo you off of getting an AMD card. This is me just trying to make you aware that bad things can happen sometimes, and they happen in the comments too. Sorry, you guys, you guys say naughty things. But let's go ahead and see what you said in yesterday's episode of Hot News. Baroknak saying, maybe I'm just getting old, but April Fools, which are made to be as believable as possible, just to trick people, just take me off. It was fun when it was between friends IRL, but of course corporations had to completely ruin the holiday to try and appear relatable to people. And bonus points when the April Fools joke announcement is a better product or update than what the company actually pushes out. Ha ha, so funny. I, I, I agree. You know what? Maybe I'm getting old too. It's just the curmudgeon in me. I, I just don't appreciate it anymore. Like there was that one that happened a couple of years ago where it was NZXT was going to release the GPU. Why wouldn't we want that? You make good looking motherboards. Why wouldn't I want a matching GPU? What, what, what part of you, what part of the, like, it just, uh, sorry, the frustration came out. Then we got the AJ kid saying LMAO after two replacement 14900 KSs on Intel's over voltage fiasco. The AMD thing is just kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, that reputation that Intel has with those CPUs is not going to be lived down anytime soon. I really hope that that's not the case with what's going on with AMD. Um, so, but we got Michael saying, I've got a 9800X3D and an ASRock motherboard. I've seen nothing wrong at all with mine. Temps don't ever go above 60C most of the time. Um, not to freak you out or anything, because that's not the point of what I'm about to say. But from what I've read on a lot of the accounts of people who have had damaged CPUs and motherboards is that it does just happen suddenly. There's no real indication that they're dying. It's not like the, the Intel CPUs where they're overvolting and then degrading and then not able to complete pile shaders and then having blue screen issues. No, it's an all of a sudden one pop failure that your, your PC is now not working. So any indication that you've not seen anything wrong with yours does not mean that it can't have this issue. So it's slightly different. Slightly different, all. that's all I'm saying. And then Jermaine saying, I have a 9950X3D on an Asus Tough B850M Plus Wi-Fi board. Case only supports MEATX and ITX. And between that and my founder's 5090, I'm just paranoid about even using my system at this point. You should, you should switch to, uh, I was gonna say Linux, but that doesn't make any sense. Switch to Mac. They, they don't burn up anymore, allegedly. Um, 
or uh, uh, just just work off of a phone. Play games on your phone. G, G, G Force Cloud now. G Force now Cloud. Xbox Cloud. See you tomorrow. Yeah.